But I also felt really good that I had taken a chance and stepped out of my comfort zone and tried something new. I was still the quiet, shy kid that really didn't want to be noticed, but I also had grown and gained a little bit of confidence and set some goals for myself, thanks to my advisor pushing me out of my comfort zone. Now I need you to fast forward just a few years to 2020, just last year. I am married, I have taught ag, I graduated from college, and now uh, we're raising our four kids on our farm by Quaker. And our oldest kid, Wyatt, is just starting 4-H. So we're having some conversations and talking about what some 4-H projects might be that he'd be interested in. And he says, well, I think I want to show chickens. <laughs> chickens? Uh-uh. Nope. Not happening. I don't even like feather pillows. I do not want to have chickens. They're gross. They are feathery. They make weird noises and they run like dinosaurs. They're creepy. Not happening. <laughs> Let me set the record straight that I don't care if you have chickens on your farm. That doesn't bother me, but not on my farm. Nope. The only place on my farm that I want chicken is on my plate. <laughs> but how do I tell my son that I don't want chickens? I didn't want to, you know, squash on his dreams. That's not your job as a parent. So what did I do? I stepped back and put my hands up and said, not my project. And I said, you go on and do that. Go ahead. Well, after that, Keith and the kids got busy building chicken coops and they had a blast. They were having fun and they were excited and ordering the different breeds of chickens that they were going to pick out. Well, chicken day came, and the kids were completely beside themselves with excitement. And I stood in the garage, and I watched while they unloaded the chickens, all 70 of them. <laughs> and I was skeptical. <laughs> Even more skeptical when I learned that they were going to live in my garage for the first few weeks of their life. Like, sticky, gross, nasty, ugh. Not very happy. I was very uncomfortable. But, it didn't take me long to realize that those chickens were really good babysitters for my kids. And it was COVID, right? We were all stir crazy with our kids at home. If my kids weren't in the house, they were out sitting in the garage playing with these baby chickens. And once the chicks got through their ugly phase, it was actually kind of neat to see the different breeds and how they're unique and different. Well, a few months later, we had our first egg. And that was a big day at our house. So much excitement and wondering which chicken laid it. And oh boy. By that point, those poor chickens had been drugged and carried and toted all over our farm. Half of them had names. Kids, we, we butchered some too, which they were oddly excited about. Uh, but uh, the ones, the layers, were still kind of a part of the farm. and. Oh, the kids had jokes about them. They would impersonate the chickens. And if you couldn't find them, they were on the chicken pen once again. So along the way, uh, I actually realized I came to enjoy hearing their chicken stories because they had so much joy and had so much fun with it. Why well, I had to take kind of a crash course on how to show this chicken for the fair. And somehow I must have absorbed some of that knowledge and learned even more in achievement days because we were having a conversation with somebody, uh, Keith and I were, at our house, and all of a sudden I just started spewing this chicken knowledge out. And I was like, where did that come from? And Keith looked at me, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know where this came from. So by that fall, though, those hens, even when I would go outside, they would be just lined up behind me, following around the yard. When the kids are out at the playset, they're flocking around the playset and having fun, and the kids think it's great. And somewhere along the line, I became a begrudging fan of having chickens at our house. Their dinosaur runs quite entertain me now, and I don't mind having the fresh eggs either. But how in the world did that happen? This time I wasn't pushed out of my comfort zone, I was pulled by my kids. I saw them having so much fun and I didn't want to miss out on it. And so I quietly stepped in 
on that project with them. Now, I'm not going to say that you will ever see me carrying a chicken around our yard, but I can easily do chores, collect eggs, I'll put them at night, whatever needs to be done. So who knows what's next? You know, wilder things have happened. Stepping into the unknown and trying something that doesn't have to be a big step. And sometimes it happens in phases. Sometimes you take wild steps forward and then you sit for a while. Sometimes you tiptoe forward. Sometimes you're pushed or pulled. And sometimes you take that very first step all by yourself. But I think the really important thing is making sure that you move. You can't stay where you are and expect to grow. So I want you all to think about something for me tonight. This is a really easy challenge and something you can do at any point in the next few weeks. I want you to think about one thing that you could do to step out of your comfort zone sometime in the upcoming month. Maybe for you FFA members, it's signing up for leadership camp. Hint, hint. Maybe you're going to go buy yourself a chicken tomorrow. Maybe you will sit by somebody new at a lunch table that you don't normally sit by. Maybe you'll sign up for an AP class that you know is going to be very challenging for you. For you adults out there, you're not off the hook either. Maybe you'll sign up for a class or take a seminar of, of something that you've been interested about but never taken the time to learn. Or maybe you will help Mr. Gross out and volunteer to coach a team. Egg teachers always can use help. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be something as small as trying a food you've never tried before. But the important thing to remember is that you get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Thanks for having me tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize our members for their uh, great accomplishments, not just this year, but uh, given what happened towards the end of last year, we also need to go back and recognize some of the achievements that we have from that. And so starting off with, we need to mention the 2019 National FFA Convention. We had a meets team attend made up of Titus Waldner, Bailey Binger, Ty Hofer, and Grant Hamilton. And also in 2019, we had a winning land judging team at the Central Region Land uh, event in Westington Springs. And that was made up of Andy Brooker, Caden Bottom, Kyle Hamilton, and Jeb Walton. And can you guys stand up for a second so we can see it? And that's been a roller coaster for these guys. I, I really admire their fortitude with the up and down of that whole situation because they were on track to go to nationals last May. And we all know what happened last year. So then this year we were going to go to nationals and COVID is still among us and issues with that and nationals is not happening this year again. So despite, you know, the build up to, oh, we're going to go on a weekend. And okay, we're going to do it this time. No, we can't. They persevered through that and they've always had a good attitude and continue to, to push forward and achieve. <coughs> uh, we also need to look back to 2020 in case uh, you hadn't heard we had done online CEs or an online state event. Um, I imagine the kids are probably in the same place I was last year where I kept thinking, we're, we're, we're going to do this, we're going to meet in person, we're going to have these events and we're going to do it. We're, we'll keep pushing it off and we'll get there. And finally, by May, <coughs> the state association went ahead with online CDEs. Uh, so in, in egg mechanics, Cordell Coleman made up the, he was in that event, he got 37th in the 26th place team. Agronomy was a 6th place team with Carter, Jessica, Caitlin, and Mason. Carter at 23rd, Jessica at 33rd, Caitlin at 34th, and Mason at 42nd. Horse judging was, the third, was a 13th place team, Ashley Massett got 4th. And Daniel, Daniel Noel got 29. Livestock judging, 27th place team with Andy, Wyatt, and Logan. Meets evaluation, 6th uh, place team, Caden at 11th, Jed at 23rd, Raymond at 25th, and Kyle 
at 29. Milk quality uh, made up of Alex and Landon, and natural resources made up of Titus and Daly. We also had three state degree recipients Wyatt Brooker, Logan Gilbert, and Titus Waldman. So then, over the course of that summer, normally we would have leadership camps, we would have various events going on in the summer. Again, we weren't able to have some of those things this last summer. So the next major event we had was land and range judging, and I think the kids would agree with me that we were pretty excited that we were able to go to something in person and able to get back into the swing of things. Uh, so our land judging team placed second. Carter got seventh, Harley 10th, TJ 16th, Cole 20th, Jackson 25th, and Mason 27th. Um, can you guys are help, helping me hand out the awards here quick too? And I know some of you guys, uh, you have pins or you have medals up here, so as you hear your name announced, make sure you come up and you get your medal, receive your awards. Range judging, our team placed third, with Ashley in eighth place, Jed in ninth, and Kyle in eleventh. You'll see a note there with a kind of a weird name next to Silas's name. I'd like to bring this up as often as I possibly can. He was the only person in the whole event to correctly identify Scribner Panthrass. <laughs> and so I caught a little bit of grief of that of like, well, were you telling him the answers or sending signals? I said, no, it was just luck of the draw, last minute going through things. At least that's my take on it. I don't know if he just randomly put that and that's what he went with, but either way he got it right. For the SD FFP Foundation Scholarship, Harley, Presley, Brendan, and Weston all received a jacket to that scholarship. Then in October, we started working on leadership development events. And there was a lot of talk, land judging, we figured we could do safely, it's outside. Well, now we're moving into things where we're inside, we're getting into the little closer proximity. How are we going to make this work? Our FFP district was adamant that we were going to have our event in person. We did split them out over two days so we could minimize the number of kids being around each other as much as possible, broke it out where we went by school, and um, had a good event. Our A communications team placed first with Caden, Jed, Kyle, and Zach. Our A issues team placed second, Cole, TJ, Landon, Mason, Jessica and Caitlin. Our parliamentary procedure team placed second, made up of Ashley as our chair, Kyle, Jed, Andy, Danielle, and Pete. And our chapter conduct and meetings team placed second, with Harley as our chair, Jackson, Weston, Brendan, Caleb, Presley, and Malachi. In a broadcasting, Cole placed third, Mason fourth. In Creek speaking, Brendan placed first in the district, and Malachi placed sixth. Employment skills, which is formerly known as job interview, and that's basically what they're doing, they're applying for a job, interviewing for it. Carter placed third, and Briar seventh. STEM, Cordell placed third, and Silas fourth. And in public speaking, Raymond placed sixth. As a chapter, in the chapter sweepstakes, we placed first, which just basically means overall we had high placings. We earned points for getting first, second, third. So overall we had really good placings, which allowed us to win first in the chapter sweepstakes. So after districts, uh, we moved on to state LEDs. And I was hopeful that it would be held in person, but due to the situation, the state decided to have it virtually which was definitely a learning curve for us. Um, I guess my probably thing I struggled the most, most with was the echo on the speakers. That was fun to try to work with judges. And um, Fortunately, LBEs do lend themselves a little bit better to uh, a virtual format. Like in employment skills, there might be a day where you have a job interview over Zoom. In a broadcasting poll place 19, in a com, Katie, Jed, Kyle, Zach, place 10th. And I'm going to come back to Creed. 
Employment, Carter plays 16th. In extent, Cordell plays 7th. And then jumping back to Creek, Brendan Noel plays 1st in Creek. So he will attend the National FFA Convention in October. That, as of right now, is being planned to be held in person. So, congratulations, Brendan. Congratulations to all our LDE participants. <clears throat> I'll also mention uh, the LDE season was very, the state side of it was very drawn out. They, they split uh, the events out over basically six weeks. So something that normally would be at the beginning of December, one and done, it just kept going, going, and going. And I, I say a lot to the students that they, over that long course of trying to keep it going, they kept going, they kept showing up, and they performed. <clears throat> so the next thing we moved on to was career development events. And again, we were trying to figure out what this was going to look like, what adjustments were going to have to be made. We were very fortunate in our district that we had three in-person events. Um, the South Dakota FFA Association as a part of our adjustment working with uh, SDSU, because uh, we are somewhat under their uh, rules, and making adjustments to be able to have an in-person state convention. One of the things that we had to do is qualify to make it to state convention. So only the top five teams from every district get to go to state convention. Which, if you're in the southeast, might not be a big deal if you only have eight chapters in your district. Just due to population size, growth has been in our district. We have, I believe it's 22 chapters in our district. Our district has been fighting this out, trying to be that top five team since the beginning of March. And so, like I've been telling the kids, I would expect District 6 to be one of the best, well-represented districts at the state convention this year because you go to District 2 down by Madison, you go to District 1, you go to District 3, a lot of those, they had one event. They had their qualifying event, and that's it. So we're very lucky in our district that we had Redfield, Northwestern, and Miller to participate at, and then our chapter was also invited to Broke. So we had a number of opportunities to participate, which is mainly due to, or is in large part due to the chapters that are active in this part of the state. So starting out at the Redwood CEs, our A Business Management team placed fifth. Ashley at 19th, Cordell 21st, Silas 22nd, Jack at 25th. Our Grammy team placed fourth, Harley at 7th, Caleb at 11th, Weston at 20th, Malachi, Jackson, Brendan, Presley, and Jesse also on the team. A Mechanics, 10th place. A Mechanics team made up of Kyle, Raymond, Breyer, Zach, Elliott. Our Meets Evaluation Technology team plays first. Caden at first, Jed at third, Danielle at sixth, Mason at seventh, Cole at tenth, Carter at eleventh. Natural Resources plays seventh, Caitlin at seventh, Sorry, play, our team plays fourth. Caitlin was at seventh. Alex at 23rd. TJ 24th. Jacob at 37th. And our nursery landscape team plays second, with Jasenia placing third, Andy fourth, and Jessica, Jessica Gottfried, that's a typo, at 15. I will also mention they lost by one point. That was a pretty, uh, pretty tough loss. So I'll also say, uh, at Redfield, whoever got first got one of those spots. Our district decided, instead of doing all of our events at Miller and deciding it there, whoever got first at Redfield got the spot. So that was part of our rush this year was trying to lock in a spot so we could get our kids in. Because there was no one going along the state convention just to experience. You, you had to be participating in something. Okay, so at Redfield meets locked in their spot. They were good to go. Um, but, as you're going to see on a lot of these teams, you can have four people on a team at state convention. I didn't make them, you know, divide out. I didn't make them go to a different event right away. I let them fight it out and see who would secure those spots. At the Northwestern CDEs, Egg Business placed sixth. Jack had 11th. 
Ashley 12th, Port Elk 21st, Silas 23rd. Your Grammy, we place fourth. Farley got fifth. Brendan 10th, Jackson 28th, Weston 29th. Egg Mechanics place ninth. Elliot got 18th. Raymond 22nd. Zach 43rd. Our meat evaluation team placed first again, with Jed placing first, Mason placing third, Carter fourth, Katie May, Danielle thirteenth, and Cole eighteenth. Natural resources placed fifth. Caitlin got tenth, Landon seventeenth, TJ twenty fourth, Jacob twenty ninth, Alex forty first. Nursery landscape placed third. Jessenia got third, and there's another pickle. Jessica got three, place ninth. Sorry, Jessica. As many times as we looked over this, and we still missed it. And Presley got 23rd. Poultry evaluation, we placed second to Chester. Uh, Kyle got first, Briar eighth, and Andrew ninth. So because Chester wasn't in our district, we got the poultry spot at Northwestern. Nursery landscape was tough. There was initially we thought we had it, and then there was a missing scorecard, so they did go back and rerun it and ended up getting us bumped down to third. So whoever placed next best at Northwestern secured a spot. And then the last three spots were decided at Miller. In eight business, we placed third, secured our spot, Danielle in eight. Ashley, 11th, Cordell, 14th, Jack, 15th. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Agronomy, 4th place. Harley got 4th, Brendan, 9th, Caleb, 15th, Weston, 24th, Jackson, 27th, Jesse, 31st. Egg Mechanics placed 10th, Elliot, 25th, Raymond, 31st. Zach, 35th. Meeks got first again. Kane first. Jed, third. Mason, fourth. Carter, ninth. Natural Resources placed second, with Caitlin at fourth, Landon at eighth, Alex, 17th, TJ, 23rd, Jacob, 24th. Nursery Landscape placed first, with Jesenia at second, Jessica at third, Cole at fourth, and Presley at 13th. And the poultry team placed the first, Friar first, Andy second, and Kyle third. So our last event we went to was Groton, and Groton was technically District 1's event due to them having lower participation and we were invited to attend. Um, we didn't take a whole group, we just, who was, uh, there was a track meet that day, so some of the kids were on the track. The ones that weren't, we loaded up in a minibus and headed to Groton. All right, business team placed third. Cordell at fifth and Ashley at eighth. Agronomy placed second with Harley in first, Caleb in fifth, Weston in 17th, Jackson 18th, and Jesse 19th. Egg Mechanics, we had Andy jump over to Egg Mechanics since they didn't have a poultry event. And he placed 22nd. Kind of a one man band that day. But that was good. And Meeks placed first with Caden in first, Carter in second, and Mason in fourth. Natural Resources, Caitlin placed fifth, and Nursery Landscape, the, our team placed third with Jasenia in first and Presley in sixth. So, and then jumping down a little bit, just to kind of go back and talk about who, had, who made it, our egg business team made it, so if you're on the egg business team, please stand up so you can see who's gonna constitute that team. Our agronomy team made it, Meats. Natural resources. Nursery landscape. And poultry. And we'll also have a range uh, ID team at state. So some of the some of the folks who didn't make it on the other teams, I moved them over there because uh, it's a nice investment in next year when we do range in the fall. 
So, congratulations to all our individual placers. chapter award we'll find out on I believe it's Monday night how we did uh, we were a national chapter award uh, finalists so there are three areas that you can be a finalist in uh, growing leaders building communities and strengthening agriculture so you can apply in any of those areas and then there's also an overall finalist and so usually when you're at state convention you can kind of figure out who's going to be an overall finalist because they tend to be a finalist in all areas our chapter was a finalist in all three areas, and we're one of the top three overall finalists. So on that Monday, tune in to see if we are, if we win national chapter for the state of South Dakota, and then we can submit our application on the nationals. And then lastly, I want to recognize Ashley and Cordell. They're going to be receiving their state degrees at the convention. Uh, that will be on Sunday night. If you have Facebook, we'll have uh, posts with links so that you can watch the events happen and uh, kind of be a distance take part in the events. So congratulations, Ashley and Cordell. Before I hand it back over to the president to begin with the degrees, I just uh, want to say thank you to everyone for a great year. It's been probably one of the best years of teaching that I've had. Uh, great kids, great parents to work, great work with, great community. Um, it's just, uh, it's been good to show up and, and, and the events just really go. But that just shows how how strong of a tradition and how strong of community support we have here. And that's, I, 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 that's hard to build and it's hard to, to maintain and just speaks volumes to what our communities uh, can do. So thank you. Brendan Knoll, 
Harlan Nielsen, and Presley Bingham. Congratulations. This year I get the privilege of uh, giving out the honorary chapter degree. And uh, the FFA awards the honorary chapter degree to deserving members of the community. As stated in the National FFA Constitution, the honorary degree is presented to those who have rendered outstanding service. This year's um, recipient is Mr. Brink. Mr. Brink is not able to be with us tonight. We'd like to recognize him as this year's honorary chapter degree recipient. Mr. Brink started his teaching career with the Tule School District in 1977. He attended South Dakota State University from 1972 to 1976 and earned his bachelor's degree in agricultural education. While attending SDSU, Mr. Brink was heavily involved in campus activities such as Alpha Gamma Rio, excuse me, Little International, and the Agricultural Education Club. He also participated in meats, dairy, and wool judging while attending SDSU. While showing at Little International, he won the Dairy Showman Championship title and later went to be both the sheep and dairy superintendent. Mr. Brink was very involved and dedicated in these clubs. He still takes pride in them today. 
When Mr. Brink earned his degree in education, he began teaching in Tulare in 1977, started to change the minds of his students. In its over 40 years of teaching, he ran one of the most successful FFA chapters in the state of South Dakota. During Mr. Brink's teaching career, he taught approximately 29 first place state winning teams. He helped 171 students receive their state degrees and 13 students receive their American degrees. Mr. Brink was very hands on in the classroom. The A room always had the best lessons. Whether it was learning about land judging or him giving us some life advice, Mr. Brink is one of the most knowledgeable teachers I've ever worked with. We all have some memorable moments with Mr. Brink. From him telling me that the Vikings were way better than the Bears, <laughs> to teaching me and the rest of the land judging team to the national contest, he was always a very fun teacher to go to class with. Aside from teaching, Mr. Frank and his wife Betty own a, di a diverse livestock and crop operation where they raise cattle, sheep, corn, soybeans, and the production of his new greenhouse. The Frank farm has had continuous production to register Hampshire sheep. They are also members of the American Hampshire Sheep Association and the Hereford Association. As you all know, Mr. Frank has had a very illustrious career while teaching here in Tulare. On behalf of the Hitchcock Tulare FFA chapter, I'd like to show Mr. Frank our appreciation for his unmatched service and tenure by recognizing him as our honorary FFA chapter member this year. Does any member know of any new or unfinished business which should properly come before this banquet? <coughs> Seeing none, we are to about to adjourn this banquet of the Hitchcock Tuller FFA chapter. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent in labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, everyone, and, above all, honest and fair in the game of life. Fellow members and guests, join me in, to, in saluting your play. I now declare this banquet adjourned.